Hello, I'm Professor Toybox, and I've got Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with me, which means it's time for another episode of Toybox Tutorials. We're working on Mickey's first mission in my Fantasia toy box, the goal of which is to save the village over there from the brooms. And I'll come into spark mode and show you what I've got so far that we've set up in the last two weeks. So we have a dynamic trigger connected to a locator in the middle of the village. And when you enter the area around the village, it will trigger this enemy wave generator over here and a friendly wave generator, which will put some brooms and five townspeople in the village that Mickey has to save. And so Mickey will come into the village and collect the townspeople and deliver them to this place of safety here, thus saving them from the brooms. We still have some work to do, though, to polish up this mission. And one of the things is to help the player understand the goal of the mission and what they're expected to do. So one of the things we also set up last time was this little townsperson out here. And uh, we connected this dynamic trigger to them. And so I want to set him up as a proper mission giver. And in order to do that, we need three toys. First, we need a radar marker to help the player find the king and guide them over here. And we're going to look at that next time. Second, we need the dynamic trigger attached to him so that when we approach, he'll respond to us. And again, we hooked that up last time. Third, we need a text displayer, which we can use to tell the player what to do. And that's our topic for today. I've already shown you how to set up mission givers in my storytelling series, but I'm going to do that again here because it's a great example for how to use these toys. My focus today, however, isn't so much on the mission giver, but rather to provide a comprehensive tutorial on the text displayer. You'll find the text displayer in the Creativa Toys drawer. This toy allows you to choose from over 80 different words and phrases. And I'm going to drop one over here where some other toys um, I've already placed are already waiting for us. And uh, as we come in here and look at this, we'll open the logic menu. And you've got several options here. Under New Logic Connection, these are all the trigger signals that this toy will broadcast. So anytime text is displayed or dismissed from the screen, um, a text proposal is accepted or rejected. And we'll talk about what that means in a couple of minutes here. Or a specific line of text is dismissed. So there's five different trigger signals that this toy will broadcast. You also have a new actor connection and a new locator connection. So you can connect this text displayer up to our actor over there or the locator. And I'll show you what that does here in a moment. And then you have properties. And under here there are three properties. You have uh, the text duration, which is the number of seconds that the text will be displayed. I always found two to be a little short, so I usually set it to four. There's the text style. And this determines how and where the text is displayed on the screen. So whether it's top, middle, bottom, or the text is attached to a connected actor, or banner, which displays it in very large letters over the screen. Um, the proposal, which again, I'll tell you what that is in a moment, in a confirmation. You can have the text display over the triggering actor. So whatever actor triggers this uh, text displayer. Um, all players or specific players or a locator. So there's a lot of different options for how to display the text and where. And the third option is uh, called player. And this is only applicable to certain text styles. Um, so for example, if you have a proposal uh, question basically that uh, is up, um, you can decide whether all players are gonna respond to it or just the local players. And now that the Disney Infinity servers are offline, these are the same option or whether a specific player can respond to it. You can also say whether a specific team responds to it, um, or just the triggering player. And all players as the default is fine. But you'll notice there's no way here to specify which text, phrase, or word you want to display. And uh, so to do that, you need a logic connection. So if we come over here to our button that we drop down, to experiment with, we can set up a new logic connection. So when the button's pressed, we come to our text displayer and we can tell it to dismiss all the text 
or we can tell it to display some text. And these are all the categories of text that are available to you. And if you select one, there are certain words and phrases that are available in that category. And this is kind of difficult to browse because uh, you have to set up a logic connection and then go through these categories this way, and it's not real intuitive. I'll set this to say hello for right now. Um, and since it's not very intuitive, I've got a PDF on my blog that you can download, and uh, that'll make it easier to uh, browse the list of words and phrases that are available to you. But we'll come out here and test this, and if we push the button, you see it displays a little thing in the middle of the screen there. It says hello, and that's kind of hard to read. Usually what I like to do is use the banner option and use that style. So if we select banner for that, and now we push the button, that's much more noticeable. Some of your other options, of course, are you can connect it to an actor. And so we'll come over here and do a new actor connection. And we'll connect it to our little townsperson that I dropped down here. And you'll see that's established a connection now. And we also have to come under properties and change the style so it's displayed over the triggering actor. So now if we come out here and we push the button. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why didn't that display over top of her? That's kind of weird. Oh, it's displaying it over me. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, triggering actor. <laughs> That's why. Now I want that to be on the connected actor. Well, that's what triggering actor does, is connect, put it over my head. And now it's over her head. So that's a little better. <laughs> that's what I was trying to show. All right, so you can also connect that to a locator. And so we'll go ahead and delete that link. And if we come down to new locator connection, we can connect up to the locator. And got to remember to come back and set the properties. The text style to be locator. And that basically does the same thing as the connected actor option except it'll display it over there on top of that location. So that's helpful. There may be times where you want to use that. Of course, uh, you have to be looking at them or in that direction in order to see that text. And uh, if you're not looking in that direction, then you'll miss it. So I don't usually use those options, but I'm sure there's some uh, reasons why you might want to do that. So now that we're done with these guys, I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And we'll go ahead and move our text displayer over here. And so we're going to go ahead and use this for our mission giver. And I'm going to come in here and change the properties for this. And for the text style, I'm going to use Proposal. And this will ask a question, basically, of the player. And you'll notice the player option is back for that style. And uh, all players is fine. I'll leave it set at that. Anybody can accept or reject the proposal. And so we'll exit out of that. Now, last time, we did not have the text displayer. And so I had it set up so that when you enter the region around the townsperson there, it would get him to start following you. And once he started following you, it would disable the uh, dynamic trigger here. And so those connections are no longer needed. So we're going to come in here 
and delete that link. And I'm also going to, I think that's the one, yep, delete that link. That's the one that disables the dynamic trigger. And so now the only connection here to that guy is our, as is our actor, and that's where the dynamic trigger is centered over. And I think eight was a little bit too much. I'm gonna change this down to six. So you have to be a little bit closer to him. Okay, so now when you enter the area around this guy, so new logic connection on the dynamic trigger, when the area around the townsperson, the connected actor, is entered by player any, we'll come over to our text displayer, and I'm going to look under the defense category, and this is about the closest thing that I've got in here to explain to the player what I want them to do. I want them to deliver the friends that are in the town, the townspeople basically, to the area of safety, the base. And uh, we'll use the radar marker next time to help um, identify what the base is. And then it says for extra loot. And <laughs> I kind of wish that wasn't there, but yeah, maybe at the end of the mission, in another lesson, we'll set up some kind of reward for the player after they've saved all the townspeople. So that's the message that we're going to go ahead and display. And this will put up a prompt to the player asking them to accept or reject that proposal. And so we can come in here and new logic connection. When the proposal is accepted, we'll come back over here and turn off the dynamic trigger. And I my original plan was, is on proposal accepted, to have the townsperson follow you around. And uh, that actually doesn't work for some reason um, when you use the dynamic or the use the text displayer here on any signal to try to get this little guy to follow you. It doesn't work. He just wanders around. And so there's something here that somehow using this toy to direct him to follow doesn't work whereas using this one did. Um, but that's actually okay. I think I'd rather not have him follow you anyway, so that that way we can enter into the village and um, he doesn't follow us over this trigger area. Um, this trigger area, again, I set that up last time, so that and if, if any of the villagers in here try to leave this area, that we would get them to faint and uh, cause them to not leave the area because I want them all confined in here in the village to make it easier to do this mission. So the fact that he's not going to follow us is not a problem. And if we come over here, what we can also do is on new logic connection, if for some reason the player decides not to do this mission, we could come over to this little guy and have it play looped and disapprove. So that'll change his behavior. So he'll be like, hey, what are you doing? I need you to save my people. And likewise, um, if the text proposal is accepted, we shouldn't be disapproving anymore. We should go ahead and play looped and have him maybe cheering you on. That would be kind of nice, so that his behavior is a little bit more dynamic depending on what you decide to do. And maybe after all the townspeople are saved, I'm not going to hook that up today, but after all the townspeople are saved, then we can change, change his behavior back again to just standing still, or maybe wandering around. I don't know. We'll see what we decide to do when we get there. So now we've got our mission giver set up. And again, just by way of review, so we start over here. We're going to cross the bridge and enter the trigger area in the town. And that'll generate the brooms and the townspeople that we need to save. And when we approach this little guy, um, and right now we don't have a radar marker on him, so maybe one thing we could do to try to have him get your attention 
And this would work even after we have the radar marker set up, is instead of standing still, maybe having jumping up and down to try to get your attention. He'll still stay in one place, so that's good. So you'll see him hopping up and down, and eventually he'll have the radar marker over him, and we'll approach him, and he'll ask us to save his friends, and we'll say yes or no, and away we go. So let's go ahead and test that out. So before we do that though, let's go ahead and save. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Save. And OK. And there it goes. It's always a good idea to save before you go and test something out. Because we can always get back to this state by reloading the toy box. So, over the bridge. And now the brooms are spawning in the village and the townspeople. And this little guy is trying to get our attention. So he says, deliver friends to the base for extra loot. If we say cancel, then he's going to shake his head and why, what's your problem? If we come back though, he says, deliver friends to the base for loot. We'll say continue and he'll go, yay. So now we'll run into the village and we've got a guy here trying to get away. Pick him up. Bring him over here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> totally missed. <laughs> One of the reasons I got the wall there. Hey! There we go. Alright, let's try this again. Uh, he's not letting me pick him up for some reason. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to save everybody. <laughs> Bank shot. <laughs> Get back here, you. Whoops. Hey. Interesting. You walk up against the wall and it drops him. Now, where's that last guy hiding? He's around the village here somewhere. There he is. Come on, you. Don't be hiding in the corner. That's not a safe place. This is a safe place. And there we go. Yay, they're all saved. So that helps a little bit. Gives the player an idea of what's expected of them. We talked to the king out there and he tells us to go save the townspeople, deliver them to the base, and it gives us a little bit more context of what we're supposed to do. Um, obviously there's still some work to do here because we don't know where to deliver them or where the base is, and for that we'll use a radar marker and we'll talk about that next time. Until then, I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to sign up on my blog or subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss the next lesson. You'll also find all of my previous lessons in this series on both sites. Just look for the Toy Box Tutorials category or playlist. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.